This video will be a basic overview of the Unity 3 interface. When you first open Unity, you should be seeing a view something like this. If your interface looks different, you may want to go to the Layout Selector and choose Tall. That way your layout will match what you're seeing here. Everything that you see here is contained in the project file. The project file includes all the game's scenes, scripts, art, and audio assets. There are five main views in the Unity interface. They include the Scene view, which is where you can select and position environments, the player object, cameras, enemies, and a variety of other game objects. We won't be working with the scene view in this course. Next we have the game view, which is representative of the actual gameplay. This is the window where the game is actually displayed when you enter play mode. Next we have the project view, and this is where you'll see all of your assets that you've imported into the game. This may include scenes, audio files, and a lot of other files. A scene file is like a game level, and this is the file that you'll actually modify when you implement your game audio assets. Next, we have the hierarchy view. This view displays all of the game objects for the current scene. The only game object we'll be working with is the audio manager. This is a custom game object just for our purposes, and we'll look at it in more detail in just a few seconds. Next, we have the inspector view. This is where you can look at detailed information about the currently selected game object. This is also where we'll go to assign our game assets to various triggers in the scene. In the toolbar, you can see the play mode buttons. The play mode buttons are used to control the editor play mode so that you can see and hear if your game assets are working properly. It's important to note that while in play mode, any changes you make are temporary and will be reset when you exit play mode. You can enter play mode by clicking the play button or by pressing Command P on the Mac or Control P on Windows. To pause gameplay, you can press the pause button or press Command Shift P on the Mac or Control Shift P on Windows. Next, we'll look at some special considerations that are specific to sound design. The first is positional audio. Positional audio, often referred to as 3D sound, is audio that has pan and roll-off properties that are controlled by Unity during gameplay. When positional audio is enabled, the Unity audio engine simulates the position and distance of sounds by adjusting pan and volume. Most of the time, dialogue and sound effects have positional audio enabled. When positional audio is not enabled for an audio clip, it does not have panning or volume attenuation, and therefore, it always plays at its original volume and pan. Generally, music and cinematic clips do not have positional audio enabled. When setting the volume for an audio clip, the valid range is from 0, or silent, to 1.0, or full scale. The roll-off factor is defined as how quickly a sound fades away as the player travels away from the audio source in the virtual environment. This roll-off value is entered in feet where the value represents the maximum distance at which the sound can be heard. Importing audio assets into Unity can be accomplished in two ways. The first is to drag and drop assets into the project view. In this example, I have a folder full of weapon sounds that I'll drag and drop into the project view. Unity will import the entire folder into the project and also copy its contents to the project's assets folder. Another way to import assets is to choose Assets, Import New Asset. Then I can simply select the asset and click the import button. Once again, Unity will import the asset and copy it to the project's assets folder. Once the assets have been imported, I'm ready to assign them to the event triggers in my scene. Before you assign the assets, there are a couple of things you'll need to do. First is to double click the scene file in the project view to be sure that you're making edits to the desired scene. Next, we'll go to the hierarchy view and select the audio manager. This will display all of the Audio Manager's properties in the Inspector view. To assign an audio clip in the Audio Manager, first you'll locate the event trigger that you want to assign. In this case, we're going to assign a sound for the rocket launcher. If I click the small circle to the right of the unassigned audio clip, the Select Audio Clip dialog will appear. And initially, you'll be seeing all of your imported audio as an audio waveform with the name of the file beneath. This looks nice, but really isn't very practical. A better idea is to adjust the slider in the right-hand side of the toolbar. If you move it all the way to the left, you can see your assets in a list view. If the list is long, you can use the search field at the top to reduce the number of items. Once you found the asset that you want to assign, simply click it to make the assignment. And now I can close the Select Audio Clip dialog. If we come back to our Inspector view, we can see that the assignment has been made successfully. If you want to modify the volume or distance rolloff for an asset, Locate it in the Inspector view, and then type in a new value for either the volume, which can be 0 to 1, or the distance roll-off, which is a value in feet. 
If you need to enable or disable 3D sound for an asset, simply click the asset in the project view and its properties will be displayed in the inspector. Here you can see the 3D sound checkbox, which can be checked to enable 3D audio or unchecked to force the sound to play in 2D.